Uh, hello, it's from Trifle Productions with another quick tip for real. Uh, but before I continue, I'd just like to say happy new to everyone. Uh, hope everyone had like a safe uh, transition into the new year. Um, and just, you know, hope everyone has a good year just in general. And from there, I'm just going to say, uh, I just want to give a couple of tips that will help people in the new year when it comes to 3D animation and things along those lines, because that's what I do. Now, the first thing I want to bring out is uh, people tend to, I guess, make New Year's resolutions, which is, for some people, it's a tradition. The only thing with that is a lot of times people just don't keep it, which isn't helpful. Uh, and the main thing is, that's what I always tell people, you're being excited about the new year. The only thing is, when you talk about the new year, it's actually just the next day. That's all it is. There's nothing, there's really nothing new about it, except it's just a new day. That's all it is. And every day is a new day. So yeah, you can be excited about the new year, but just because you're excited about the new year doesn't mean that last year is just going to get eliminated. It's just not going to exist everything that happened yesterday the day before it continues on today tomorrow next day and so on and so forth so when you make new year's resolutions you're pretty much uh for the most part setting yourself up for defeat and what i mean by that is this stop making new year's resolutions make daily resolutions and if you're not used to doing that, do it on a monthly basis. And that's gonna help you in 3D animation as well. Uh, I always tell people for myself when it comes to giving people advice on how to become a better 3D artist, what you need to do is every day set a goal for yourself in terms of what you wanna do or accomplish for that day. Um, for example, you could just set a time for yourself for that day to create a sphere, a ball, um, I don't know, just make bevels on a cube, things like that. It doesn't have to be anything extreme, doesn't have to be anything long term. Just don't get every day, get you into the habits of, you know, just continually working in that 3D space, even mentally, that helps a lot. I've been told that it takes, I guess, like, Doing something for three days straight to create a habit. I don't know if that's true or not. But as for myself, once I tend to do something every single day, it becomes just second nature, it becomes automatic. And that brings me to the second point of, yes, do it every day, but you don't have to spend eight, nine, ten hours every single day working on something. You don't have to do that. Ten minutes a day is helpful. That's going to help you out quite a bit. Because eventually, once you do it 10 minutes a day, you'll eventually end up doing it more often throughout the day. For myself, that's one thing my dad taught me when I was growing up. He told me that you don't have to spend hours a day doing something. Five, 10 minutes a day is good enough. Because at the end of the week, those five, 10 minutes start to add up. You've accomplished quite a bit in those five to 10 uh, minutes a day. And once you get used to it, you can increase it. For myself, being married with children, it's not easy finding time to do these tutorials. It's not easy finding time to uh, work on these animations that I've been working on. But I have to do it in order to accomplish what I need to accomplish throughout the day. I'm going to give you an idea of what my work schedule is like every single day. This is every day, seven days a week. I work an overnight shift at my job from seven at night until seven in the morning. So I'm pretty much up all night. When I get home, my wife's already taking my children to school. So I come home, I cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner for all of us. And then I clean up the apartment. I, I like being clean, I like being tidy. I clean up the whole apartment, straighten out the furniture, dust, vacuum, do the dishes, make the beds, all that stuff in the morning. After that, I hit the weights, I work out, lift, push-ups, squats, so on and so forth. And then after I've done that, I work on an animation, I work on something in Blender for like maybe 30, 40 minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. 
By the time I'm done with that, I've got to go back out, run errands, pick up my children from school, bring them back home or I'll run errands, run errands with them when I'm out with them, come back home, make their lunches, make sure they're doing okay, help them with the homework. After that, go back to the job at 7 o'clock, and that's every single day. Every day I do that. Now, if I thought to myself, well, let me just, you know, wait until I've got enough time, you know, to work on Blender. I'd never work on Blender because I'm doing so many things throughout the day. I don't really have that set of set time to work on anything in terms of 3D animation. And if I had that mindset of, well, let me just wait until I have enough time. The movie that the movies that I've been doing, the movie that the last one that I did, the 3D animation, I did, the last one that I did was called Bridges. That took me three years to do. Every single day working on this animation, 10, 15 minutes every single day. If I decide to say, hey, I need to have eight, nine hours a day to work on this thing, it wouldn't have been done at all. It wouldn't have been finished or completed. But working on it 10, 15 minutes a day helped me out a lot and it got accomplished. And I learned a lot of stuff during the process. So for yourselves as 3D animators, work on your skill level or your skills every single day, five, 10 minutes. It's not a lot of time, but it is helpful. So that's the second tip. Uh, the third tip I'd want to give is when you're getting burned out on working on these animations or working on your skill level, modeling, rigging, and so on and so forth, just take breaks in between as much as you can. I'm not talking about extended breaks like three, four months. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about taking a break. Let's say you've been working on something and you're just stuck. You hit a wall. Get up and walk around just to clear your mind. That happens to everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. It happens to every single person on the earth. When you're working on something for quite a long time, it starts to weigh on you, especially when you're stuck in a spot where you just can't get out of it. Getting up. Walking around to clear your head helps out a lot. Go to something else. Go watch something on TV. Watch. Um, I'm not talking about binging on Netflix for like four, four or five hours. But, you know, just watch something on TV for a little bit. Maybe read a book. And before you know it, you know, you, you start getting breakthroughs mentally on, oh, okay, that's what I'm, supposed, what I'm supposed to do. And it happens a lot where you get a breakthrough when you, take, when you step away from whatever it is that you're doing. So that's helpful. The fourth tip I want to bring out is learn as much as you can. And I've been seeing people complain a lot about the fact that on YouTube, they say, well, hey, all these tutorials are like 30, 40 minutes long. I can't just sit down for 30, 40 minutes and watch these tutorials. Yes, you should. You actually should do that. I know that there are people who are on YouTube, channels on YouTube, where they just yammer on and just talk about stuff that has nothing to do with the video. I, I've seen that quite a bit. Because they're trying to get uh, make the videos as long as possible for the sake of monetization, I understand that. But when you come across a video that's packed with information that's helpful to you, where you can actually learn something from what you're watching, don't worry about the time. If it contains valuable information, watch it you know what i mean stick with it and learn from it so don't don't stop looking for all these quick quick tutorials like two minutes long three minutes long i'm gonna you have to sometimes you just have to sit down and look at a tutorial that may be 30 40 minutes long if there's valuable information in that video watch it you know get as much information as you can from it and use it it's helpful and then the last point I want to bring out is this when it comes to posting uh, animation that you've done don't be ashamed to post stuff up <coughs> excuse me to post up videos that you've done even if they're not good when it comes to 3d animation that's where critique comes in and it doesn't matter how long it took you to make that animation or to model that whatever it is that you're modeling just put it up uh, there's nothing like, there are people that, go, that are going to slam what you do. I've had that happen to me multiple times where people just pretty much dog stuff that I've done in the past and they've just torn it to shreds because it's not that good. But that's when I first started doing animation. When you first start doing anything, no matter what it is, animation, uh, learning how to drive a car, 
any kind of um, uh, trade or anything like that, the first time you put out a product from whatever you're learning for the first time, it's not going to be great. That's just the fact because you're still learning how to perfect what you're doing. So just put out your content and don't worry about the views. That's one thing I've seen people do a lot. I've seen people post up animations, post up 3D products, or post up things along those lines. And they end up not getting as many views as they would like to have. And then they start complaining. They put they start putting comments at the bottom of the videos and hey, you guys aren't fair to me. I've, I worked on this video for six months and I've only got two views. You guys are messed up. I'm like, why are you concerned about the views? Don't be concerned about your views. Just put content up there and accept the critique, that, especially the, the helpful the critique that can improve your skill level and whatever it is you're doing when it comes to 3D animation. So those are the five points that are there. You know, One, just watch videos that are helpful to you no matter how long they are. Two, don't complain about you know your, your views, your post. Don't be ashamed of whatever you're putting up. Just put it up there and accept the critique that is helpful to you. Take breaks when it's needed. And just uh, work on your craft uh, as much as possible throughout the days. Remember, remember, don't worry about trying to make New Year's resolutions. Make daily goals for yourself. If you're not used to the whole daily thing, start off with a month. You know, make monthly goals for yourself. When you're used to doing it for a month, turn it to a week. When you're doing it for a week, turn it to a day. But every single day, five, ten minutes a day, work on that skill level in terms of 3D animation, modeling, rigging, texturing. Uh, work on something in 3D animation that's going to help you improve and get good habits when it comes to 3D animation and Blender. And those are the five uh, tips that I've got, real life tips that will help you be more improved in terms of 3D animation in Blender in the year 2023. And uh, once again, hopefully this video is helpful for those who are watching. Hopefully you can hear me with this mic. I've got this new mic and I've had it sitting on my leg. Uh, hopefully you can actually hear what I'm saying. But thank you guys who, subscribe, who are, or are subscribing now, those of you who have subscribed in the past, and those of you who will subscribe in the future, really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.